Hey, and thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to be talking about moving a PDF file into Illustrator while keeping all of the elements of the PDF um, and converting those into vector shapes. And this is a process that typically a lot of pre-press graphic designers encounter when trying to edit documents that either a client has supplied them or a document that just needs to be uh, changed up and sometimes the faster method is to edit a document uh, to the point where you can change whatever you need um, and also ways to grab elements out of PDFs that are vector based so keeping that in mind this does not cover everything gets converted to vectors. This is a tutorial specifically for vector-based PDF uh, that have already been in the background created by a vector program. So if that, as, long, as long as that makes sense to you, we're good to go. Uh, if you need more clarification, uh, please check out my YouTube channel for more insights on lingo and what pre-press uh, stuff you need to know about. So, moving on, we're going to go ahead and open a, a PDF document here, and this is the San Diego Zoo. Uh, I just went ahead and went online and opened it up. So, here we go. So, I downloaded this, and as you can see, we have uh, a number of different um, uh, text uh, spots all over different sizes and we have a lot of different graphics inside so a normal PDF when you open it in Illustrator which is what we're going to do right now we're going to go to Illustrator and we're going to open this PDF and this is what a lot of graphic designers like myself and designers that end up encountering when they get documents from either other designers or corporations or just places that are like hey this is all we got please you know do with it what you can and you usually get stuff like this missing fonts now missing fonts have been a problem uh, in my entire career as a pre-press graphic designer and this is one way I have found that you can take a uh, original PDF document and take it to the point where you can use the shapes of the letters that you need for a font or um, maybe it's a logo that's in a font it just depends sometimes what it is that you need or maybe you just need the document just to retain its original um, you know elements so nothing really has changed and you can make very minor adjustments whether it be a maybe an ink level on a certain color or maybe it's a issue with um, just changing the color or eliminating a line out of there that's you know maybe it's being updated you know things like this are what we encounter so right now I'm just gonna hit close but uh, it typically you know you encounter everything like this you know missing fonts missing elements you know and you're just you know kind of sick of it so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and show you how to get past this now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna actually open this up into uh, Adobe Acrobat again okay so what we're going to take a look at here are a couple ways to uh, convert a PDF within uh, Acrobat to uh, allow you to gain the elements that you want while uh, using a PDF in Illustrator. So what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and edit the PDF. Um, typically, if you can't find Edit PDF, just feel free to go to the search bar, type in Edit PDF. Oh, it hasn't finished search. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, that's find. <laughs> let's see here. If you go to Home and you type in Search Edit PDF, 
All right. Well, you can see right over here on the right hand side, there's the tools options that comes up and edit PDF is right there. So if you need to do that, that's one place to do it. Um, or if you're just looking for it, it's kind of like a pinkish, purplish, uh, you know, horizontal bar and a square and some lines. So just look for that icon when you're trying to find this. Okay, so now we're going to go back home, uh, back to the zoo map. The first thing we're going to do is right here in the menu items of Edit PDF, you have well, what's called watermark. Okay, this is obviously the um, piece that basically protects it from any kind of uh, copying or issues that people you know can find out whether or not there's a watermark in it and this is how you find it so and how you go ahead and update it so we want to add a watermark so here we are and we want to go ahead and we have to put something in for, for a watermark I like using the smallest thing possible which I believe is the star um, and as you can see, it shows up here in the preview. Uh, so here we are, and we want to go ahead and we have to put something in for, for a watermark. I like using the smallest thing possible, which I believe is the star. Um, and as you can see, it shows up here in the preview. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change that size first. Drop it to 8, because I don't think it goes any smaller. Or maybe it goes to 4, I think, would work. Yeah, so it's basically never going to show up on anything, and that's what we want to see. Um, the other thing we want to do is change the opacity of the watermark to 0%. Let's drop it all the way down. And then once you've done those two things, you can now hit OK. Okay, now we've gone ahead and added the watermark. The next thing we need to do is to head over to your tools again, and we want to go into print production. Print production has uh, little crosshairs for the CMYK and a little piece of paper icon. So we want to go to print production, and then right over here in this little tool menu, you want to go to Flattener Preview. Now you're going to click this and it's going to automatically start flattening the file. That's fine, let it do that because it's part of the process. It needs to do this to make sure that all the elements are being gathered in to the document. So here we go, all done. And we just want to go ahead and keep this at its normal resolutions as it comes up. So right now the section of the raster vector balance you want to be 100%. Uh, you can leave the line art and text resolution at 1200 uh, and then the gradient and mesh resolution at 300 is fine. So you can leave those as they are. What you want to do is click right below convert all text to outlines and then convert all strokes to outlines. And if you already understand what that means, then you know what's going to happen next. Now, here's the thing. You want to hit Apply down here in the bottom first. Okay? It'll give you a warning saying, hey, this can't be undone. Go ahead. Yes. So it's going to go ahead and do what you just asked it to do. So right now, the PDF engine is going through all the text document in the document and flat, flattening it and making sure that it is in an outline mode. So it converts it into uh, essentially a vector shape at this point. Once you've done that, you go ahead and hit OK. Over here on the left, it's a little confusing, but that's how you do it. Here, OK. Great. Now we've done this. Now we want to save it. OK, file, save as. I like save as because it always allows you to make a copy. We want to put this on the desktop and we just want to go to the end of the line here. I'm just going to add outline and say save. Now this is going to keep everything that we just did. So, and we have a separate version, so if there is any issues, we can always go back to the original. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get out of that, and I am going to go back into Adobe Illustrator, look at our old document here. So, if we go up here, 
walking the zoo. So we want to see this, you know. Uh, in the other one, we want to see this all fixed. So that's what we're shooting for. So we're going to hit open. And right here at the top here, we have our outline version. I'm going to go ahead and hit open. And here we go. Now, as you can tell, no font issue. Uh, dialog box has occurred. And now you can see uh, right under here, uh, walking the zoo, the entire part uh, com completely converted back to outline mode. And as you can see in wireframe, you can also access anything here if you need to swap something out, move something, use it for some other file, something else needed from it. This is all ready to go now. And this has also been a really great way to find elements, um, obviously to outline text, but this will also give you something to reference. You can always use it as a backup. So it's a really great way to keep things uh, a little bit more stable in a print environment, so you're not really worried if a font is getting converted or outlined prior to um, exporting or output to press. You know, all these things are already taken care of because it's not a, not text anymore. It's a flattened object. So I hope this was useful, and I hope that you guys uh, like the new updated version. And if you would like to hear more of this type of information, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, have a awesome day.